Hey guys and welcome and to my OG fans welcome back to my new show Cultural Kaleidoscope the show where we talk global what's affecting us who's behind it and what can we do about it um you'll be able to find out all this and more every Monday for people who don't know me I'm Kobim Gionyama your host the most um I'm a newly grad with a bachelor's in apparel design so I would love to work in apparel design from specifically um footwear design um <laughs> I am from Nigeria, by the way, and I'm based in Seattle. To my fans of my old account, I am so sorry for like how long the break was. College really shook me up. I want to thank you guys for sticking around and also for checking back in. Um, as the homage to you guys and to my personal growth, my old content will remain on this channel for you guys to view whenever you like. So um, without further ado, love you guys and let's jump into it. All right, first let's look at our environment's outlook. So basically, the state of our environment is always changing, right? Um, so let this week, here's the update. First thing that I want to do is to um, define climate change. So let's do that. So climate change is where gases from fossil fuels surround the earth in a bubble of pollution, right? This bubble is trapping heat that would normally radiate back out um, to outer space. Um, so this trapping of heat and pollution has been basically for a long time collecting and that's making... Um, that's causing polar ice caps to melt, that's causing rising temperatures around the world, and it's also causing um, stronger storms as we're on the this world. This week, climate forecasters are predicting areas will, be, um, will become unlivable, basically, because they're going to be too hot, starting with areas like Pakistan, China, and sub-Saharan parts of Africa. Temperatures are going to rise to unbearable points. Everywhere in those areas, they'd all be having like heat stroke or something. So that's what's being predicted coming up for us. And that's a bit upsetting because um, climate change is happening for decades. And whoa. Yeah. There's a Kino karma moment. I wanted to know what's behind thus. Why is there so much um, climate change non-belief in the world? Why is there so much fight back when um, people are trying to get things done and people are trying to um, make legislates for gas prices and stuff? So I was wondering who's fighting back on that. And what I found was um, Fox News is a big perpetuator of climate change. They have been denying it for like probably decades. So what I found was Fox News actually denied um, a satirical climate ad by Josh Gold in 2016, the summer. Um, it was so, I actually liked the ad. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna leave a little clip of it right here. And I was wondering who's behind Fox News not liking like climate change awareness? Like who's behind not wanting to be more sustainable? and ecolog ecologically mindful, like who's behind that? So I found the, um, what is it, chair of Fox Corp and News Corp, Rupert Murdoch was actually behind um, the denies of climate change. And also he perpetuated a lot of conspiracy theories for decades as well. Um, he also, because he's the chair of these corporations, it means he's the owner of multiple news outlets like Fox, um, Wall Street Journal, and something called the Australian. I don't read it, but I'm sure it's very popular and that's dangerous. So, um, and he just stepped down in September of um, 2022. So just now, is he now stopping lying about climate change? So I was wondering who's replacing him? Is Fox like going in a better direction? I was like, I just kept digging. And what I found was, um, Fox Corp, um, what's it called? They just had someone step into a new board position and that person that they chose was Tony Abbott, a prime minister of somewhere, I don't know, search him up, Tony Abbott. And then um, it's funny because his legislation actually, um, his government repealed carbon price legislation when they were trying to reduce carbon footprints and trying to probably minimize the use of fossil fuels. He was against that legislation in the law. That could have actually helped his state or his country or whatever he's the prime minister of australia i i i tony abbott people um i don't care to research people i just care to put their information out there just in case you guys want to help me out but yeah can you believe that they had someone who also is a climate change non-believer step into the role of a board position right after they just had him step down because they're now acknowledging fox news is now after whoa huh, sorry fox news is now after decades of denying climate change acknowledging that climate change exists and is happening. So that's ridiculous that he just steps down and they have someone who's 
basically him step back in he was younger i guess and even though he's just feeling those visions anyway because rupert's son lachlan murdoch um is going to step into both chair positions eventually so there, he's going to fill the positions that his father filled the um the chair for the news corporation or for news corp um and for fox corporation he's going to fill those both of them and um it's funny because i was reading about him and i was all i was seeing was heavily conservative also doesn't believe in climate change and i'm just like i'm just like what image are they trying to fix but they're not really trying to fix it what are we doing here what are we doing here and then so i was wondering who's been allowing fox news to be showing misinformation for such a long time who's been allowing it and what i found was the fcc has actually been allowing this which is a government corporation um the federal communications corporation or something like that but yeah they handle like um phones all broadcasting um networks even communication between airways you know between flights and stuff like that they that's them handling all different radio everything so they're the ones allowing this misinformation to be posted and distributed widely for decades which is actually impacting the world in, in a negative way so i was just wondering are they going to be held accountable for that is somebody going to be held accountable for that i'm going to leave different links where you can kind of make them be accountable for that or at least request them and if we're all requesting them hopefully they open their eyes and see maybe somebody has to follow the chain back and figure out who wants to be taking accountability because somebody's liable somebody is liable the damage has been done to the planet to the damage that's been done in the common economies worldwide so yeah um and now places are becoming unlivable so like and besides places becoming unlivable due to heat sea levels have been rising so people who live on the coast of basically everywhere have been put out of houses for the last few years like it just keeps happening so is anybody going to be held accountable for any of that tragedy who's going to help those people who who so yeah you help me like now you guys have the information you guys go out there and get them period now it's time for our moment and, and i call it's bold brilliance this segment is going to be called bold brilliance okay it's moment in bold brilliance let's go over there and then i'll let you know about why that name is that name now it's time for our moment of bold brilliance um it used to be called black brilliance but since my show is called cultural kaleidoscope and i want it to be inclusive to everybody and also because it's going to be about the world and what's going on in the world and in including other cultures cultural kaleidoscope so that means i shouldn't include other cultures in my brilliance moment so the segment is going to be now called bold brilliance so let's start bold brilliance so today's star is going to be david benton i was actually just reading his book it's um an activist handbook um david benton he wrote the book in march of 2022 so he just wrote it now basically just last year um it was so cool there was this quote in it so let me read the, let me read that quote to you white americans owe a huge debt to black americans for all that they've done for our nation they literally built our nation during slavery and deserve reparations to narrow the harrowing wealth gap that holds america's um that holds america that holds america back basically um denies justice and perpetuates a form of modern slavery whoa from the activist media handbook that's what they wrote just now and that was in the book like the thing is, everything he said wasn't like shocking. It's things that I've already known, things that I believe, but um, things that I didn't know that anybody else would say out loud or would say that they believe and actually believe um, and like stand for. So, it, but I, the more I read about him, he's so amazing. He's an activist who worked in Nelson Mandela, so many different other activists as well. His book was so amazing, basically. I was just eating that up because. I'm an activist at heart, so um, super inspiring. And to hear a white man say that, and he's old, I am shook. Everything is not adding up to me. So if he can acknowledge that, why are so many other people choosing to be blind? Because, you know, like six years ago, I used to be naive to the situation of um, racism and colorism and discrimination and all of those things. I used to be naive to all of it. Like, is that even possible? And now, like, and I found out the truth myself later on, but people kept shutting me down. Like, I found out the truth maybe two or three years later. Like, you know, I always knew the world wasn't, you know, you know, peachy dory. Like, I, I, knew, I knew, like, you know, we weren't all best friends or anything. But to find out the truth, which is actually, like, and, and don't even talk about kidnapping and trafficking. Like, 
now it's global warming and climate change like and it's been climate change for a long time so why is it so bad right now why how did it get here so yeah to hear him like acknowledge the they the, the black americans built the the uh, built america basically and deserve reparations i've i've been saying that and people think i'm a psycho but yeah um i think a lot of people deserve reparations too I, I, like i'm not I, I'm denying anybody else by by acknowledging my own plight basically to so hear him acknowledge the plight of black americans and black americans includes african americans black americans includes every african every black person that makes sense so for him to say that we deserve reparations for all that we've done and all that our descendants have done is like amazing um so i hope that he will be able to come to this conclusion sooner than later um and so yeah he's our bold brilliant star of the day david fenton ladies and gentlemen there will be information about him in the description along with everything else that i've talked about as well in the description so um oh my gosh I, that's all i have for you guys man um this week basically what i'm working on is building my portfolio and also like creating for this um supreme sneakerhead competition i don't know how i happened to get into um that but um i was able to get into that and so i mean i did study apparel design and i want to work in footwear design so i guess it's not so off for me to um be in a supreme sneakerhead competition but basically um, I'll leave the link down in the description for that too for my Patreon. So if you guys want to support me in the coming weeks, that would be amazing. It would help me really um, build my page and my platform with them and also help me win the competition. That would be so amazing and beneficial for me because then I get to go to LA and create a sneaker with them. That would really kickstart my career, especially because I just graduated this June from SPU. So um, everything is happening and I would love you guys' support. So um yeah that's what i've got coming up in the next week weeks for me and until next week i need you guys to remember to read your brand books that you can make history too and to always kobe you my um teacher miller said that to me i always said that i would say the shout out so shout out to you mr miller kobe you guys i'll see you guys later